everyone, I'm Kelsey Chatwash, um, and I'm interested in the politics of temporality and centering efforts to lane women's activism uh, for recognition in Chile. Um, I am a PhD candidate in cultural anthropology at the Graduate Center at the City University of New York. Um, I'm the advisement of Professor Jacqueline Nancy Brown. And I'm here in Chile to do nine months of independent research, uh, with many thanks to the Fulbright IAE program. Um, uh, for providing the funding that's allowing me to do so. Uh, this research will be the basis upon which I'll write my doctoral dissertation, as a few others in the room do as well, uh, upon returning to the US. And hopefully, we'll also be a starting point for future collaborations uh, and more accessible publications and presentations in Chile, the US, and perhaps elsewhere. Uh, so, as an anthropologist, I'm not so much interested in archaeological discoveries, uh, salvaging histories, or documenting or making legible culture and folklore. Uh, rather, I'm interested in politics and activism. Uh, specifically, I'm interested in activist futures, so ideas, imaginations, and experimental practices by activists that represent or generate future, more liberatory possibilities of living, working, and cohabiting uh, this increasingly unequal and dying earth. Uh, so, but understanding activist futures involves understanding the politics of the temporal frames uh, through which past, presents, and futures are read. Uh, not to mention, of course, by whom and how these figurative readings are occurring. So in regard to this research that I'm about to begin here in Chile, uh, I'm interested in understandings of activist futures when foregrounding the practices and perspectives of women after descendant Chilean activist groups and collectives who are organizing, um, among a variety of things, uh, for state and public recognition, um, of Afro-Chilean multi-generational peoples, uh, history projects, territory, and improving the social conditions of Chile's multi-generational effort to send peoples, among other divergent goals. These groups are based largely in Arica, uh, which is hence where I'll be based the next nine months to do this research. Uh, and most multi-generational effort to send Chilean families also seem to reside or trace their roots in the northern regions of Arica y Parinacota and Tarapacá. Um, and there was a, a regional census in 2013 um, in the former region of Arica y Parinacota that counted over 8,000 Afro-descendant peoples in that region. Uh, I plan to work with four activist groups in particular, um, which are all led and largely comprised of women, and with whom I am in touch with and I visited the past three summers. Uh, so Oro Negro, Luanda, Hijas de Zapa, and the Red de Mujeres Campesinas, and the last of which includes Afro-Chilean women as well as other uh, campesino woman. And so my time here uh, in <coughs> methods uh, in Chile will be split, be split between conducting participant observation and oral interviews with activists, examining activist group repositories, um, Oro Negros in particular, and local media archives, and better orienting myself to the regional, national, and transnational political economies and networks of activist solidarities in which these groups are embedded and producing. Um, all the while keeping in mind negotiating the power dynamics of my own positionality as a white scholar from the U.S. Uh, so across these themes, I am interested in the co-constitution of nation, race, gender, and class, and related inequalities. Um, and I am very grateful uh, to the anthropology departments at the Pontificia Universidad Católica here in Santiago uh, through Professor Joe Feldman, and at the Universidad de Tarapacá in Arica uh, through Professor Dante Angelo, uh, for their affiliations and support in my pursuit of this research. Uh, so, um, in response to the, the prompt that Mason sent us, uh, how did I come to be interested in efforts for activism? Why am I foregrounding activist futures and the politics of temporality and the role of women? And how do I think, and what do I think are some of the potential contributions of this research to historiographical and social studies of Chile? Uh, so I first visited Chile in 2010 as an undergraduate exchange student based in Santiago, where I completed coursework at the Universidad de Chile and Pontificia Universidad Católica. Uh, I learned the horrors of the Augusto Pinochet dictatorship and the history of the United States interventions in Chilean politics. I also learned about Chile's history of robust leftist social movements that had taken over factories, seized land, and helped end Pinochet's dictatorship. I began to consider activist potential uh, to fight political, economic, and state powers that foster social inequalities. In particular, after witnessing the burgeoning student movement in 2010, demanding for free uh, quality public education, which of course has continued on and grown since then, 
Uh, a few years later, I decided to apply to anthropology PhD programs in the US to eventually return to Chile and study this dynamic social movement. Uh, and then during my doctoral studies, I grew frustrated with the imbalance of attention in social movement studies given to institutional and masculine <coughs> methods of activism, often specifically by and kind of led by men, um, often excluding the contributions of less grandiose forms of activism, uh, non-institutional forms, and the roles of women. I was also struck by how questions of race went largely unasked in Chile, uh, despite the growing preponderance of studies of race elsewhere in Latin America. Uh, then I took a course uh, by Professor Donna Ann Davis at CUNY um, on the politics of reproduction in fall of 2015. Professor Davis asked us, the students of the class, to consider how our proposed dissertation projects might shift if we centered race in our research questions and analysis. Uh, however, race is not commonly discussed as a meaningful marker of social difference in Chile. Uh, usually, you know, people emphasize on class and class inequality, um, which is, of course, also very significant. Um, so I began searching the internet and scholarly literature for understandings of race and racism in Chile. I came across blogs by Afro-Chilean activist groups Oro Negro and Lumbanga, um, as well as local media articles on Afro-Chilean activism and some scholarly articles on notions of La Raza Chilena, uh, Sarah Walsh's, Arlene Stronghoff's, and Patricia Richards' work in particular, and then began to pursue the topic of Afro-Chilean activism for my research. Uh, what was particularly interesting as well was that not only did the centering of race shift the content of what I was studying, um, but it also greatly shifted the temporal frame or the understanding of time um, and history that I needed to understand Chilean politics. Uh, so in historiographical and social studies of Chile, scholars often center Augusto Pinochet's uh, 1973 to 1990 right-wing dictatorship as a sort of rupture in an otherwise relatively non-violent past, which as a sort of historical event, uppercase H, uppercase E, uh, functions as a strong historiographical magnet um, to understandings of most other moments in time in Chile that kind of always uh, often understood in relation to this moment of the dictatorship, um, as <coughs> historian Leslie Joe Frazier has argued in her book Salt in the Sand. In contrast, contemporary Afro-Chilean activists um, foreground two other historical moments. The colonial era of enslavement of, enslavement of African peoples in the Chilean vice royalty um, from 1536 to 1823, and the history of Chilenization programs and anti-black violence after the War of the Pacific in the border, which was from 1879 to 1883, in the borderlands region of northern Chile. The latter of which, I've realized, is also about the same time and place um, that folks usually cite the beginnings of the Chilean labor movement, the massive strikes of Chilean, Bolivian, and Peruvian workers, and the then booming nitrate industry, which included many afro and indigenous peoples. Uh, but that's another topic for another presentation and potential future research project. Uh, so in addition to shifting temporal frames through which the contemporary moment is understood, one can also consider how racism, or how focus on race and racism, um, as well as white supremacy, structure the unequal valuation of people's lives and justifies racialized violence and exclusionary futures. When someone envisions an ideal future for Chile, who is seen as an integral part versus who is seen as not a part of that future or as not mattering, expendable, or a burden. Women are commonly, commonly designated with the responsibility of the social and physical reproduction of new generations, um, and thus often play a key role in countering such exclusionary futures, of countering the notion that a group of people's futures don't matter. It seems not coincidental that the bulk of afro chilean activist work is being led and practiced by various women. These women have taken up roles in local state offices to enact projects uh, such as demographic surveys, uh, they are creating community spaces, organizing protests, writing educational curricula, doing academic historical research, hosting regular events and radio programs, advocating for environmental protections, securing funding from international organizations for intellectual and cultural programs, and are coordinating with regional, national, and transnational Afro-diasporic, anti-racist, and women's activist networks. Yet, while the aim of public and popular recognition of Afro-Chilean people's history and territory is generally shared among these groups, there are stark divisions among women activists regarding how to do the recognizing or tell the histories and towards what sorts of long-term ends or goals. Activists' um, different political solidarities and alignments with other activist groups are telling. 
Uh, so only one group, Rwanda, is explicitly critical of capitalism, coloniality, and patriarchy, and has made clear statements and acts of solidarity with the student movement, the no FAP movement, um, with regards to pension programs, uh, Mapuche movements, and black working class migrant communities in Chile, for example. Um, another topic that I'm interested to learn more about um, are how Afro-Chilean activist groups have different uh, sorts of engagements with regional, national, women's, or feminist movements, which is, there's a clear distinction there. You know, some movements are very heavy traditional notions of gender and kind of women's roles. Um, and what this shows about how gender politics are often constituted through race, race and then also you can think about how racial politics are often constituted through gender. Uh, altogether, these realities situate the perspectives of Afro-Chilean women activists as key insights into alternative temporal frames through which to understand Chilean politics, as well as alternative future possibilities for anti-racism in and beyond Chile. And again, it will be interesting to see the differences among these temporal frames um, and these practices of activism um, and alternative future <coughs> possibilities. Given these reflections for my dissertation research, I seek to not only examine the projects and visions of Afro-Chilean women activists, but their implications for understandings of race and racism, as well as gender and patriarchy more broadly within Chile. I insist that more understandings of race and racism in Chile are particularly important in the current moment. Contemporary racial hierarchies are evident in the rising social panic and violence towards working class black migrants increasingly coming to Chile, seeking employment uh, from Haiti, Colombia, the Dominican Republic, and elsewhere, as well as the long ongoing state violence towards indigenous peoples, particularly the Mapuche. Further, Afro-Chilean articulations of Afro-diasporic and national belonging exemplify the complexities of theorizing race as not just a sort of inherent quality of the foreign or indigenous other, um, but something that can be understood in relation to uh, all Chileans, or all people residing here. Uh, going off this understanding, subtle racial hierarchies can also be understood in relation to class hierarchies. One need not look farther than the divisions of Cuico, uh, or kind of more fancier upper class um, folks versus working class neighborhoods and poblaciones in Santiago, um, and the prevalence of rubios, rubias, and the former. Um, or the common preference and better treatment of white gringo migrants in Chile, uh, both past and present, if you look at the history of immigration policy in Chile, for example. Uh, meanwhile, in Chile, and of course elsewhere, um, the violence of sexual assault, rape, and femicide appears to be increasing, and extremely limited access to abortion and other patriarchal forms continue. Uh, so I imagine that these forms of gender violence and control have particular impacts on racialized folks in Chile. Excuse me, in Chile. Uh, I came to do this research in Chile because I find inspiration in how women Afro-Chilean activists are reproducing black past, presence, and futures through their diasporic practices. And I'm curious to see how these practices shift and continue now that the Senate has passed the Proyecto de Ley que reconoce el pueblo tribal afrodescendiente, um, or the project of a law that recognizes um, the pueblo, the, the tribal pueblo. Um, <laughs> how to, it, yeah. You all speak Spanish, so I'm just going <laughs> to skip the translation on that one. Uh, after the summit, um, super recently on January 23rd of this year, 2019, um, which is expected to be uh, approved by the House of Representatives in, in April. Uh, so by centering the activist work and perspectives of Afro-Chilean women, I expect that my future research will demonstrate the continuities of past, present racial hierarchies and controls in Chile, and the key role of these continuities in shaping the political consciousness and organizing efforts of people, uh, Afro-descendant or otherwise, who are seeking to construct more liberatory futures. I hope that the research I practice and produce will be useful to these activists, their constituencies, and current or potential collaborators, and insightful to scholars of race, nation, gender, and activism in Chile and abroad. Thank you. So one of the groups that you were that you mentioned are specifically they're a group of campesinas. And I don't know if um you also mentioned a little bit about the history of labor movements in, in these communities. Mm -hmm. Can you say a little bit more about um, the labor economies that they're involved with in Arica? What are they growing? What are the dynamics of their labor? 
and, and how is that itself sort of um, a platform of activism, if it is a platform of their activism? Okay, um, so one thing about these, these groups is they're super divergent in terms of who folks are, what kind of work they do, uh, what kind of class background they have. Um, and so, as you mentioned, there is the one, uh, the Network of Campesino Women, um, and that group includes, it's, um, so I, so far, just kn know kind of the, the president of that group, and I haven't really gotten to know various members of that group yet, so I don't want to kind of speak generally for the whole group. Um, but the president seems to uh, kind of sometimes articulate the focus of the group in terms of um, being a part of these uh, Afro-Chilean uh, rec kind of recognition um, demands. And other times she's much more, and, and kind of in general, that group is much more focused around um, issues fa facing campesino women. Um, and so in terms of the things that she's focused on, it hasn't been so much labor um, from what I've understood from her so far, uh, but more often focused around kind of class issues in regards to, uh, for example, like access to healthcare, um, housing. Uh, they recently built a local library. Uh, she was involved in a project securing territory for lower income folks in the area, um, and, like small plots of land where people could put houses on. Um, and also very involved in uh, elderly care and setting up communities for elderly folks, um, elderly women in the neighborhood, especially lower class elderly women who have a lot of family, mm -hmm. um, and those sorts of issues. Um, in regards to understandings of contemporary opportunity and activism in relation to the history of the labor movement, um, that's so that the, that that I was referring to. Um, I know I kind of ran through that really quickly. Uh, is like early 1900s. Um, in northern Chile, and I'm not entirely sure, it's just kind of the dates and places line up, um, but I'm not entirely sure exactly how, um, folks, I haven't asked those questions yet to people, so I'm not entirely sure how they understand kind of how those connections work, um, but there certainly were people there um, who must have been part of that movement who were offered some of indigenous, um, who were from Chile, from Peru, from Bolivia, um, given that their, that whole region was kind of crossed by the border um, in a very violent way uh, when Chile conquered and took territory from Peru and from Bolivia after the war in the Pacific. Um, yeah, and in terms of work that people are doing, it's really diverse. There's some people who are, you know, have university backgrounds, who, so for example, the president of Rio Negro, uh, Marta Salgado, she's written her own book, she's been to UN conferences, um, she's, you know, traveled throughout the world giving presentations, she has a radio show uh, twice a week. Um, but then you also have people who are in kind of more working class backgrounds, but I haven't yet noticed among these particular activist groups that there's like a particular type of labor that sure. people associate okay. with. Thank you. It's really important. Okay. Sure, that was exactly my question. The different types okay. of groups that are working and sort of the activities that they're doing. So I'll let anyone else have a question you have to talk about one more. Are you doing your research here in Santiago? Uh, no, I'll be based in northern Chile in Arica. How long are you going to be here in Santiago? Um, I am here, well, until <laughs> March 11th, um, but I'm visiting with a friend over the weekend. Okay, so. I, I advise you to go to the Museo de Bellas Artes. There's okay. a very good, very interesting exhibition on the way uh, contemporary Chilean art is uh, dealing with the, some of the issues that you have discussed in your presentation. Uh -huh. uh, feminism, uh, social inclusion, uh, all these things uh, through the view of contemporary uh, art, contemporary Chilean artists. So if you have an opportunity, go and see the show. Yeah, definitely. It's very good. Okay. Thank you. Okay.